or ratio rates and proportion. Now, the very common definition of ratio is a quantitative relation between two amounts showing the number of times one value contains or is contained within the other. Um, it's very important to understand that when we're expressing ratios, we're not comparing numbers in terms of which is greater than, equal to, or less than one, but we're comparing them to see the relationship between those numbers and what they represent. So in this case, for example, if we assume that this is a box containing 12 balls, four blue balls, five red balls, and three green balls. So if we write that out as blue equals four, red equals five, and green equals three. And we're, express, we're asked to express a ratio between any of these two color of balls. So let's say we're asked to express a ratio between green balls and blue balls. So a ratio of green balls to blue balls. Now, to express the ratio of green balls to blue balls, we have the number of green balls in this box is 3. So 3. And the number of blue balls in this box is 4. 4. So simply put, the ratio of green balls to blue balls is 3 to 4. Now, this is not, like I said before, the comparison of these two is to, to, to relate how green balls relate to blue balls. So for every three green balls we have in this box and its kind, other boxes as such, would have four balls. Now, this is not the only way to express ratios. We can also express ratios as three to four. As a matter of fact, this is a much more mathematical way of expressing ratios. So three with a colon and then four. We can also express ratios as fractions. So we could also say the ratio of green ball to blue balls is three over four. Now this is not to be confused with the fraction as is normal, because when we express this as a normal fraction, what we're saying is three parts of a whole of four. But in this case, what we're saying is that three represents the number of green balls and four represents the number of blue balls. So when you see ratios expressed as fractions, you should understand that both numbers represent total different quantities. So if we go on to the ones below here and we're asked to express the ratio of blue balls to red balls, it's simple. All we have to do is write the number of blue balls we have. Excuse me, that's a mistake. Write the number of blue balls we have, which is four, and the number of red balls we have, which is five. So four to five which can also be written as 4 to 5, which can also be written as 4 to 5. Expressing the ratio of red to green balls. Red is 5 balls to green, which is 3 balls, which can also be expressed as 5 to 3, which can also be expressed as 5 over 3. Blue to total number of balls. Blue balls, we have 4. So the total number of balls, which is 12, which can also be written as 4 to 12, and 4 over 12. Now, this final part, which is 4 to 12, also introduces us to another concept, which is that ratios can also be reduced, such as fractions. So in this case, for example, we have 4 to 12 balls. There's a common factor between these two, which is 4. Because 4 can divide 4 into 1, and 12 can be divided by 4 into 3. So we can further reduce this ratio to 1 over 3. So the same saying that the ratio of blue balls to total number of balls is 4 to 12 is the same as saying the ratio of blue balls to total number of balls is 1 to 3. So for every 4 balls, we have 12 total number of balls. Or for every 1 blue ball we have, so excuse me. For every four blue balls we have, the total number of balls we have is 12. And it's the same as saying that for every one blue ball we have, we have three total number, number of balls. Let's express other things in forms of ratio so that we can really understand what we're saying. So the question here is, the recipe for Miriam's amazing cake. To prepare the dough, mix the following. Five cups of sugar, 10 cups of milk, 15 cups of flour, three spoons of butter and six eggs. Now, what is the ratio of sugar to milk? 
milk to flour. Now the things concerned here is sugar, milk, and flour. So sugar. We have sugar to be five cups. We have milk to be 10 cups. And we have flour to be 15 cups. Now here we're asked to express the ratio of sugar to milk. The ratio of sugar to milk is 5 to 10. So 5 to 10 which is the same as 5 to 10, which is the same as 5 over 10. And don't forget, we said we can always reduce ratios where possible. So this is the same as saying 1 to 2. Now that's possible because both have a common factor of 5. We divide it by 5, 1, we divide it by 5, 2, which is the same as saying 1 to 2. And this is the same as saying 1 over 2. Now for milk to flour, milk is 10 and flour is 15. So this is 10 to 15 cups or 10 to 15 cups or 10 over 15 cups. And we can further reduce this to, because they have, they both have a common factor of five. We can further reduce this is two to three or two to three. Or two over three. So now that we understand how we can express ratios in three different forms, I'll most likely be expressing ratios in this form going forward to um, save us the trouble of writing now the ratios three times. So if we move on to the next question, which says a head of 52 sheep has 12 black sheep and the rest are white, what is the ratio of one black sheep to white sheep, white sheep to black sheep? black sheep to the total number of sheep, white sheep to the total number of sheep. So, um, total number of sheep is equal to 52. We have black sheep equals 12. And we have white sheep equals 52 minus 12, which is 40. So, number one says black sheep to white sheep. And that's simply 12 to 40. Number two says white sheep to black sheep. All we have to do is just reverse the first one, which is 40 to 12. Number three says the ratio of a black sheep to total number of sheep, 12 to 52. And the last one says white sheep to total number of sheep, which is 40 to 52. Now we can all reduce this to its lower stems. I'll leave that to you. But if you leave it this way as well, there's nothing wrong with it. The only um, difference is when you're in an examination and you have multiple choices and you have this as your ratio, you might not find 12 to 40 in your question, in your among the list of options. Instead, you might see maybe 6 to 20, or you might say 3 to 10. All these are the same, because 12 divided by 2 is 6, 40 divided by 2 is 20, 6 divided by 2 is 3, and 20 divided by 2 is 10. So if you find 12 to 20, 40, or 6 to 20, or 3 to 10, all these are the same ratios. Now, the next question says a group of preschoolers consisting of 63 boys and 27 girls. What is the ratio of boys to girls, girls to boys, boys to total number of students, and girls to total number of students? So, we have that boys equals 63, girls equals 27, and total number of students. Uh, let's express that by S equals 63 plus 27 which is equal to 19. So first one says boys to girls. So that's 63 to 27. Um, you can divide both by 9 to give you 7 to 3. So 63 to 27 is the ratio of boys to girls, which is the same as 7 to 3. 
second say girls to boys which is 27 to 63 girls 27 boys 63 which is the same as 3 to 7 I'm sure you're conversant with that by now and the third says boys to the total number of students boys 27 sorry boys is 63 actually boys 63 students 90 so this can be further reduced to 7 to 10 and for the last one we have girls to the total number of students which is 90 and girls is 27 oops that's an error girls to students and total number of students is 90 so we can further reduce this to 3 to 10 so what this is saying essentially is that for every 10 students we have three girls or for every 10 students we have seven boys or for every three girls we have seven boys or for every seven boys we have three girls regardless of how you read it you see that this is not this is actually a comparison of girls to boys or whatever this thing stands for other than girls to boys so it's a comparison of the amount of boys we have for every amount of girls that are expressed in the ratios now the next question says if bill drives between two towns 360 kilometers apart in three hours what is the ratio of distance to time now the distance in this case is equal to 360 kilometers and the time is equal to 3 hours so the ratio of distance to time is 360 to 3 but we can reduce this and we can reduce this to 120 to 1 if we divide both of these values by 3 so 360 divided by 3 is 120 and 3 divided by 3 is equal to 1 so we can have 120 kilometers for every one hour this is the same as saying he this is the speed he has to travel 120 kilometers per hour to be able to make it 360 kilometers in three hours now this particular ratio is called a unit ratio a unit ratio is one which is expressed with the denominator as one and this is essentially what is called rates now rates are usually expressed with mostly with time as you've seen here kilometers per hour or you have meters per second or you have um, um, number of whatever it is per day when you have a value expressed per another value what you have is a rate so even in exchange rates for example exchange rates you usually have maybe um 410 naira to every one euro this is a rate actually this is the exchange rate between the naira and the euro and that's exactly what a rate is a rate is just a ratio that is expressed with the denominator or with one other value as one so let's let's solve our first um, question on the rates two teams are tasked with planting trees on two pieces of land the first team completes the task on 30 meters square sorry I left that out in three hours and the second completes 45 meters square in nine hours what rates did each team complete the task now the first team did 30 meters square and they did it in three hours so which means they did 10 meters square in one hour if we divide both sides by three we have 10 over one so that is the rate they did 10 meter square in one hour 
Now the second seam completed 45 meters square and they were said to have done it in nine hours. So if we divide both sides by nine, which is the common factor here, we have that this is five meters square over one hour. This is rate two. And obviously we can see that rate one is greater than rate two. 10 meters square per hour is definitely greater than five meters square per hour. So these are the rates. Um, it, it means that the team one is actually faster in doing this. So rates also gives us the ability to be able to compare two rates that were given. For example, if you are offered two jobs and one says we'll pay you $15 per hour and the other says we'll give you $30 per hour or $25 per hour. Originally, or ordinarily, you can tell that the second rate, the second job is going to pay you more for every time that you spend there than the first job. Now that takes us to another thing called proportion. Now proportion is simply an equation of ratios. So for example, look at this question which says, Aramide is the fastest worker in a gift shop. He can wrap 15 gifts in one hour. How many gifts can he wrap in two hours? So we're told that Aramide can wrap 15 gifts in one hour. And we've been asked how many gifts do we think he can wrap in two hours? Now, this isn't a very complicated thing to, 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 to think about. If you think about it, if he can wrap 15 gifts in one hour, and if he's given twice that time, two hours, he simply can wrap twice the amount of gifts. This is pretty simple. And so you can conclude that he can wrap 30 gifts in two hours. Now, this is simple. And this is an equation of ratios. And this equation of ratios is ex ex exactly what is referred to as proportion. Proportion is simply the equation of two ratios. However, it should be noted that the ratios have to carry the same units. So for example, gift to gift and R to R. You cannot equate hours to days or hours to minutes. It has to be R to R and gift to gift. Now, this is, this is pretty simple. But what if we are given a problem where it's not very simple for us to evaluate how many gifts or whatever quantity we're looking for? And that is why proportion is actually useful. Proportion is useful because we can find new information from the information that we already have. So let's assume that we, 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 we do not know or we cannot compute 30 offhand and we want to solve this equation or these questions from the information that we're giving, which we know. So let's write our proportional. We have 15 gifts in one hour. And we're trying to find out how many gifts, n gifts, let's represent that by n, the unknown, he can wrap in two hours. Now to solve proportions, we would use the cross multiply method, which is we would multiply diagonally. So we'll multiply this value by this value, and we'll multiply this value by this value. And that's how we solve proportions. So in this case, what we would have is 15 times two, which we would write on one side, and one times n. n is what we're looking for here. So we have to make n the subject of the formula. And by so doing, we would have to divide both sides by one, which is irrelevant. But in cases where we have a value here, actually, we are going to divide both sides by the value we have here. So I'm going to treat one like it actually does matter. And let's just, just do that so that we can have an understanding of what we're talking about. So if we decide divide both sides by one, one cancels out one, and we have one here. So this is 15 times two is 30 divided by one is 30 equals N. So N is equal to 30 gifts. And that's exactly how you solve proportions. You write out your ratios as you've been given in the question, designating whatever you're looking for as N or whatever alphabet you want, cross multiply your um, equations 
and then find make the unknown the subject of the formula let's go on to solve something else so that we can really understand this the next question is if a car traveling at constant speed travels 120 miles in three hours how much time does it need to cover 200 miles so the ratio the first ratio we have is that for it, it covers 120 miles in three hours so 120 miles in three hours now we're asked how much time does it need to cover 200 miles so for the second part of our proportion we have 200 miles and we're going to look for how many hours it needs to cover 200 miles so we do the same thing like we did before do our cross multiplication which is this multiplied by this and this multiplied by this so we have 3 times 200 on one side and equate that to 120 multiplied by n so 120n and if we divide both sides by 120 what we have is so 120 carries out cancels out 120 to make n the subject of the formula here and what we have here is 3 times 200 is 600 divided by 120 and this is equal to 5 so n is equal to 5 hours so it will need five hours to cover 200 miles and that's exactly what we were saying we have the first part of the information which is that it requires three hours to travel 120 miles and from that and setting up our proportions correctly we can be able to evaluate how many hours it needs to cover 200 miles um, let's solve one more question this one says a machine can produce six yards of fabric in two minutes how many yards can it produce in one hour? So we write out our first part of the proportion, which is six yards in two minutes. And we have been asked how many yards we think it can produce in one hour. Now we can't write one hour here because remember what we said, if we're setting up our proportions, they have to be in the same unit. So for us to be able to include this information one hour in our proportion, we have to convert hour to minutes. And we all know that 60 minutes mix up one hour. So we're going to put 60 minutes here instead. And so we go ahead and do our cross multiplication. And so that's going to be 2 times n, which is 2n equals 6 times 60. Now divide both sides by the number here accompanying the end, which is two. So two here cancels out two to make n the subject of the formula. And six times 60 is equal to 360. You divide that by two and you have 180. So n equals 180 yards. So the machine that can produce six yards of fabric in two minutes can produce 180 yards in one hour.